Hundreds of years ago, when farmers needed an extra pair of hands to work the fields, having a child might have been a purely financial decision. But today, unless you are planning on raising the next Justin Bieber, kids are a big, unpredictable cost. One that can make even a normally cool and collected financial advisor pretty nervous. That's right, Julia and I will soon be embarking on what will probably be the most rewarding, but expensive, adventure of our lives. <laughs> Deep breaths. There are so many factors and variables to having a child. It's really difficult to make even a ballpark guess of what the total cost will be, especially since these days, some parents will never be totally off the hook from this financial commitment. But just because you can't plan everything doesn't mean you shouldn't plan what you can, so here's our beginner's guide to the general cost you can expect to incur in your first year of your new family member's life. Medical bills are notoriously hard to pin down. A 2016 study showed that within New York City alone, the cost for a non-cesarean delivery varied between $4,000 and $17,000. And cesarean sections in Los Angeles ran between $6,000 to $42,000. The best thing you can do is contact your insurance provider and get as much info from them as you can. Which care providers are in your network, what procedures are and are not covered, and how much you'll have to pay out of pocket. You want to avoid nasty surprises like finding out that certain tests aren't covered or that you can't use the facility you want. Make a special appointment with someone in the billing department and don't be afraid to sound stupid. Grill them for every detail you can get. You should also assume that you're going to pay your full yearly deductible during pregnancy and the first year of pediatric care. Don't forget, it usually resets at the beginning of every calendar year. Philip and I have calculated that with prenatal care, ultrasounds, clinic costs, birthing coach, child birthing classes, and, sue me, I'm worth it, prenatal yoga classes and massages, we're going to pay about $5,300 out of pocket just to get us to the birth. There's not a lot you can do about medical costs, but you can have a bit more control over stuff like cribs, car seats, onesies, and strollers. This is where family, friends, and Craigslist can come in real handy. Remember, this thing is only gonna stay the same size for about 0.5 seconds. So don't splurge on items that will have a short shelf life. There are lots of parents out there who need to offload the things their kids have outgrown. So far, we've only had to spend around $100 on maternity clothing, thanks to some friends and serious thrift. We're also anticipating around $300 for a used crib, $200 for a bassinet, $300 for a fancy but used stroller set, $500 for the first year of baby clothes, and another $800 for car seats, room decor, and whatever else we might not get from our registry. Unless you live in a country with generous maternity leave, AKA not the US, a working woman will need to factor in a certain amount of time off to get her baby through the first few months. Your choice is to either set aside part of your budget in the months leading up to the birth to build a maternity cushion or live on a tighter budget after the baby's born. Neither choice is super appealing, but either is preferable to piling up debt. The average baby will consume about 30 ounces of breast milk or formula a day. Breast milk is essentially free, while formula costs on average about 11 cents an ounce. So you're looking at somewhere between zero and $100 a month to feed the little tyke. Diapers are a bit more expensive. A baby will need on average about 225 diaper changes a month, which means that depending on the brand, disposables will cost you between 90 and $300 a month. Cloth diapers can save you about half that if you wash them yourself. If you use a laundry service, expect to pay about the same as disposables. And while cloth diapers do cut down on waste, according to one study, the electricity and water required to wash them mostly cancels out any benefit to the environment. No way around it. You will be adding two adorable little carbon footprints to the world. This is the big one. Childcare is the number one expense for most families and it can take a million different forms. There's daycare, nanny share, 
free grandparents, hi mom, private nannies, or a spouse that stays at home. According to the National Association of Child Care Resources and Referral Agencies, the average cost of center-based daycare in the United States is $9.72 a month. And the average nanny can cost anywhere from $2,000 to $3,000 a month for full-time care. Nearly one in three families report spending 20% or more of their household income on child care alone. The best way to start nailing down a number is to ask your friends and family who live in the same city what their method of childcare costs them. The U.S. Department of Agriculture also has this handy online calculator that gives you an estimate of child raising costs based on your region and preferences. I never really thought of babies as agriculture, but I guess they do produce a lot of fertilizer. It'll be a long time before Julia and I really know what the cost of raising this particular human will be. But one thing we're already glad we did is build up a three-month emergency fund. Knowing that we can deal with unexpected costs without accruing debt helps us sleep at night. If only we could save up an emergency fund of sleep. <laughs> yeah, so if you think there might be a baby in your near future, start feathering your nest with cash now. And remember, just because you're gonna be a new parent doesn't mean you need a new house or a new car. Baby won't judge. It's way more important that you're not financially stressed during those pivotal first years. And, and that's, that's our three cents. cents.